Hi, welcome to the presentation on the accommodation reflex in the eyes. At the end of this particular presentation, you should be able to describe the accommodation reflex in the eyes. Before understanding the accommodation reflex in the eyes, we need to know what is far point in the eye. Far point of the eye represents the largest distance for which the lens of the relaxed eye can focus light on the retina. Normal vision is usually described as 20 by 20 or 6 by 6 and has a far point of infinity. So now if there is a far point, there should also be what is called as a near point. The near point is the closest distance for which the lens can accommodate to focus light on to the retina. Normal near vision is about 10 to 13 inches away. It advances or increases with age. Above 40 years, it starts to recede. So therefore, the near point or the near vision recedes with age. Let's now look at the eye reflexes. Internal muscles are controlled by the autonomic nervous system. Bright light causes pupils to constrict through the action of radial and ciliary muscles. When viewing close objects, it causes accommodation. External muscles control the eye movement to follow objects, that is, the recti and the oblique muscles. When viewing close objects or near objects, it causes convergence and this is brought about by the contraction of the medial recti muscles, which helps the eyes to move medially. Next, let us study about the accommodation reflex. The next question to be asked is, what is accommodation? It refers to the ability of the eye to alter its focus so that clear images of either close or distant objects can be formed on the retina. So, when focusing on a distant object, we find that the ciliary muscle is relaxed. The zonules will tighten up and this causes the lens to flatten and increasing its focal length. For an object at infinity, the focal length of the eye is equal to the fixed distance between the lens and the retina and this is about 1.7 centimeters. Now having seen the changes that take place when viewing a distant object, let's look at what happens when we change the focus for viewing. So focusing on a near object, we find the ciliary muscles become tense, they relaxes the zonules, the lens bulges, that is it thickens and the focal length decreases. This is mediated by the parasympathetic component of the oculomotor nerve or the third cranial nerve. And thus, the image is focused on the retina. This diagram shows the accommodation changes that take place for a near object or a near target versus that of the accommodation for a far target or a far object. If you view the top of the picture, you concentrate on the blue dot. The rays from this 
particular object for, goes through the cornea, then through the lens and is brought into sharp focus on to the retina. And this is called as accommodation for near target. While viewing for a distant object or a far target, look at the orange in the lower diagram. You find that this uh, light rays will be converging onto the retina and brought into sharp focus. So in other words, when if you are viewing a near object, the far object appears blurred and when you are looking at the far object, the near object will appear blurred. This particular table shows us some of the structures where the changes will take place while viewing a distant object versus that of viewing a near object. Eyes virgins. When viewing a distant object, the lateral recti will contract and therefore the eyes will diverge. While viewing a near object, when one changes the focus to the near object, we find that the medial recti will contract, which produces convergence of the eyes. Next, let us look at the pupil size. When viewing a distant object, we need more light and therefore the pupils will dilate. And this is brought about by the sympathetic nerves whose neurotransmitter is norepinephrine. Then when we change the focus to viewing a near object, we need less light and therefore the pupils will constrict. And this is brought about by the parasympathetic nerves whose neurotransmitter is acetylcholine. Next, lens shape. When viewing a distant object, the lens appears thin and flat. And this is brought about by the relaxation of the ciliary muscle and suspensory ligament contracts. When viewing a near object, we find that the lens will thicken, that is the curvature increases and this is brought about by the ciliary muscle contraction and the relaxation of the suspensory ligaments. Therefore, now in to summarize the accommodation reflex, when the eyes are focused from a distant to a near object, there are three major reactions that take place. Number one, constriction of pupils. This is to sharpen the image formed onto the retina. Next is the thickening of lens due to the contraction of the ciliary muscles. And this is to increase the curvature of the lens increased convexity in other words of the lens. This is also followed by convergence of both the eyeballs and this is brought about by the contraction of the medial recti of both the eyes. These three reactions together constitute the accommodation or near reflex. The diagram here shows the ref accommodation reflex pathway. When one is viewing a distant object, the eyes will be diverged and the image will be formed sharply onto the retina. When one changes the focus to a near object, the image will again fall on the retina and this information is carried via the optic nerve through the optic chiasm, through the optic tract into the lateral geniculate nucleus, which is, serves as the sensory relay station of the thalamus. And then through the optic tract, optic radiations, it reaches the visual cortex area number 18 and from there is projected to the frontal eye field 
in the front of the brain and that information is collected or projected into the midbrain area from where the third cranial nerve comes into operation as the efferent pathway through the short ciliary nerves the sphincter pupillae undergo con contraction and therefore leading to a decrease in the pupillary size or pupillary constriction is brought about at the same time through the a third cranial nerve you also have the contraction of the medial rectile muscles of both the eyes bringing about convergence of the eyes last but not least beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder thank you very much for watching this presentation if you have any feedback we would appreciate it thanks